In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about how to write linear equations in slope-intercept form. You might ask, what do we need to write an equation in slope-intercept form? Well, there's two things that you need to write an equation in slope-intercept form. The first thing you need is the slope. You need to know the slope of the line. The second thing you need is you need to know what the y-intercept is. Where does the line cross the y-axis? If you know those two things, then you can write an equation that's in this form, y equals mx plus b. Now that you know this, you might think, what do we need to find the slope and the y-intercept? Well, it really just depends on what they give you in the problem. Typically, there's three types of problems that go along with writing equations in slope-intercept form. The first type of problem is when they give you the slope and the y-intercept. So it says here in this problem, write an equation of the line with, the slope, with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 5. That is one type of problem. If you know the slope is negative 2 and you know the y-intercept is 5, then you can write this equation right away. And we'll write it right here. We know our general form for an equation is y equals mx plus b. We know that we have the slope m, which is negative 2. So we can plug that in. y equals negative 2x. And we know we have the y-intercept because they already gave us the y-intercept. The y-intercept is 5. So when we write this, because it's a positive 5, we're going to say plus 5. So when you're given the slope and the y-intercept, it's really easy to, to write an equation in slope-intercept form. However, sometimes they don't give you, they're, they're not that easy, they don't give you the slope and the y-intercept. Sometimes they give you just two points, like 8, 4, and 0, 5, and they want you to write the equation that passes through these two points, 8, 4, and 0, 5. Well, if they do that, then we're going to find the slope first. So to find the slope, we're going to use y2 minus y1. over x2 minus x1. We're just going to use the formula for slope in order to find it. Well, with that being said, then we have to pick which point we want to start with. You're going to have to remember back from the last few sections that we worked with slope. I'm going to start with this point. This is going to be my first point, so I'm going to label it x1 and y1. This one's x2, this one's y2. Once you have these labeled, it's really easy to use the formula. y2 is 5, so we got 5 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 0, and x1, which is 8. So minus 8. When I subtract those, I get 5 minus 4, which is 1, 0 minus 8, which is negative 8, which means my slope is negative 1 over 8. So now that I have my slope, I can go ahead and plug it into my equation. So I have y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in the slope. So I got y equals negative 1 over 8x. And then I'm trying to look for my y-intercept. Well, my other one of my points is 0, 5. And if you remember from a y-intercept, the special case for a y-intercept x is always 0. Whenever x is 0, you know you have a y-intercept. So they gave us the y-intercept here. The y-intercept is 5. And it's a positive 5, so we're going to write plus 5 right here. And this is our equation in slope-intercept form. Then sometimes they just give you a graph. All right, sometimes they don't give you two points, they just give you a graph. And then from the graph you have to pick out your two points. And you'll see here the two points are already picked out for us, 3, 5, and 0, 4. So you do the same steps that we just did in this problem, except the only difference is, is you've got to find the two points before you can do these steps. So let's go ahead and find the slope. We're going to go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to label these. This is going to be my x1, y1. This is x2, y2. I'm going to plug those in. So that's 5 for, x, or for y2, 5 minus 4 for, y, for y1 over x2, which is 3, 
minus x1, which is 0. If I subtract those, I'm going to get 5 minus 4, which is 1, 3 minus 0, which is 3. So I got a 1 third for a slope. Now I'm going to plug it into my equation, y equals mx plus b. That's y equals 1 third x. And it says plus b. Well, I can look right here on the graph and see, well, I want to find my y-intercept. Right here on the graph, I see that I have a point that's on the y-axis. That means that that point is the y-intercept. So 0 comma 4 is the y-intercept. 4 is what we're going to write afterwards, plus 4. And we have our equation in slope-intercept form. Now, down in this bottom left-hand corner, it says, remember, in all of these examples, the y-intercept will be given. That is true for this section that we're doing, 5-1, section 5-1. They're always going to give you the y-intercept. But in later sections, this will not be the case. So when we get to other sections, when we get to other sections, just remember that you're not always going to be given the y-intercept. All right, now we're going to do this problem. It says write an equation of the line with a slope of 6 and a y-intercept of 5. Well, again, they gave us the slope. They gave us the y-intercept of 5. So we can write our equation right away from that. y equals mx plus b. Slope is m, so if it says a 6 is the slope, we're going to plug that in. y equals 6x plus y-intercept of 5. And we have our equation in slope-intercept form. Now we're going to write an equation of the line shown. So this is a different problem here. We've got a line. On the line, they give us two points, and they also, but they give us our rise and our run. Right here, we're rising. We're going up and down, negative 2. So our rise is negative 2. Remember, slope is rise over run. So that means we got negative 2 over, and we're running to the right 1, a positive 1 here. So our slope is negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So right away we found our slope. We can plug that into our equation. y equals negative 2 x. Now we need to figure out what our b is. What's our y-intercept? Well, you look at the y-axis. Looking right at the y-axis, we see there's a point on the y-axis. That point is 0, 3. 0, 3. So that means that our b is going to be plus 3. And there's our equation for our line. Now they give us an equation of a line right here. But they don't give us anything. They don't tell us what the slope is. So what we need to do is we need to find the slope. So let's see. It says this 1 right here for this point here. But we know that point is at 0, 1. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our slope here. We know it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's label these. I'm going to label this one x1, and this one y1, and this one x2, and this one y2. y2 is 3, so I plug in 3 minus y1, which is 1, over x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is 0. So I got 3 minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, over negative 3 minus 0, which is negative 3, which means we're going to end up with negative 2 thirds for a slope. Let's plug that into our equation. y equals negative 2 thirds x, negative 2 thirds the slope, now we've got to figure out what a y-intercept is. Well, we can see on our y-axis, the y-intercept is at 1, 0, 1. So the y-intercept here is going to be a positive 1. There's our equation slope-intercept form. Now they want us to write an equation of the line that passes through these two points, 5, 1, and 0, negative 2. Well, to do this, they just give us the two points. So 
So right away we're going to go to our equation for slope, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Label this. We're gonna, I'm just going to say this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. Once they're labeled, real simple. Plug y2 in. y2 is negative 2 minus y1, which is 1 over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 5. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Negative, negative, positive. So we have a slope of 3 fifths. Let's plug that in. y equals 3 fifths x. Now we need to know what our b is. Well, let's look. We got a point here that's 0, comma, negative 2. Remember, 0 for x means it's a y-intercept. So this is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 2, so we're going to write instead of plus, it'll be minus 2. And there's our equation in slope-intercept form. Remember, in these examples, we're always given the y-intercept, but that's not always going to be the case. Now there's one that's a little bit different, but it's, I mean, it's the same type of deal. Write an equation for the linear function f with the values f of 0 equal 5 and f of 4 equal 17. Well, remember from functions, functions are like, look like this, f of x. So f of x, meaning whatever's in this area right here, whatever's in the parentheses, is being plugged in for x. And whatever's coming out here, whatever's coming out here is going to be the y. So f of 0 equal 5. What that's telling you is 0 is going in for x. So 0 is the x-coordinate, part of the x-coordinate. And 5 is the y. So for this right here, we've got 0 comma 5. For this one right here, We've got 4 for x, and 17 is the y. So we can write our coordinate as 4, 17. Right, whenever you have a function, and you see this notation, it can be kind of confusing. Just remember the x, f of x, what's inside the parentheses, parentheses is the x, what's on the outside is the y. Now that we have these two coordinates, we can go to our y2 minus y1. Let's find the slope over x2 minus x1. Let's find the slope. So, x1, y1, x2, y2. y2 is 17. 17 minus y1, which is 5, over x2, which is 4, minus x1, which is 0. 17 minus 5 is 12. 4 minus 0 is 4, 12 over 4 is 3, our slope is 3. Plug it into y equals mx plus b, and we get y equals 4, whoop, and we get y equals 3x we got to find out what our y-intercept is. Well, again, let's look at our two points. x is 0 here. That means this is the y-intercept. So we have a positive 5, so we're going to write plus 5 there. That's the equation for the, uh, for the line in slope-intercept form. You could also write this, the y here, a different notation would be f of x equal 3x plus 5. This is actually how I would write it if we're talking about a function. 